Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to check out the inner workings of the task system in Battle Royale Tycoon. We're going to add multiple task types with different parameters and different executions. Let's begin. Alright, so here's the scene from the previous video. We have both workers in here. They are periodically requesting new tasks. The task type that we have created is a simple movement. The workers simply move to the target position. And when I click the mouse button, a task is created with the mouse position as the target. The worker grabs the task and executes it, which in this case means he's going to a target position. So when I click in here, yep, the task is created and he moves there and now he's requesting a new task. Okay, great. So that's the basics for our task system. Now let's set up our task code to support multiple task types. The game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the Steam page, add it to your wishlist and follow. So let's go into our task system in here. And now in here we have our task class. So we're going to create multiple task types by creating subclasses in here. So let's make a subclass and we're going to name it move to position. This task type will contain the target position from previously. And the subclass will extend the base task class, which for now there is no base behavior, but by extending it, we can add the move to position to the task list down here, since it is a task. All right, so that should be good for now. So let's go in our game handler. And in here, instead of creating a base task, what we want to create is a task dot move to position, which then contains the same arguments. All right, so that should be working. Let's just comment out the second worker to keep things simple. And now on the worker task AI in here, down here when he's executing the task, instead of receiving a generic task, we're going to receive a task dot move to position. And let's rename this one to move to position task and rename the function to execute task move to position. So now in here, we have to cast this task to move to position type. So as cm task system dot task dot move to position. All right, so now everything is set up to use the new subtype of move to position. So let's test and make sure that everything is still working exactly the same. Okay, there's the worker, he's requesting tasks. And when I click, it spawns a task. He goes there, he grabs it and waits again. Okay, great. Everything is working exactly the same. So now in here, just one more thing on the task system. In order to keep our code clean, let's set our base task to be an abstract class. Abstract means that the class cannot be instantiated. We want this base task class to only serve as the base for all the other task types, so it should never be instantiated by itself. By adding abstract, we're going to get errors if we do try to instantiate it. So let's just test, make sure everything still works. And yep, everything is still fine. Okay, so now let's add another task type. Now in here, this will be a very simple task. The worker will simply play an animation. So let's make a public class, call it victory, because it will play a victory animation, and it's of type task. Inside, we have no field, since the worker doesn't need any more information other than the task type. Now in the worker in here, we are executing the move to position task if we don't get null. But now we have a second type, so we need to test what type this task is so we know how to execute it. So let's test the type of the task to decide how we should handle it. Sadly, the current Unity C Sharp version does not support switching on type, so the solution here isn't as clean as I would like it to be, but it works. So what we can do is if task is task system.task.move to position. If it is a move to position task, then we execute this using this function. If not, then the task is of type victory and we're going to cast it to victory and we need to make a new function to handle the victory. And after we do, let's return so we don't fall into the other cases. So again, this isn't very clean code, but since the current c -sharp version does not support switching on type, this is the best way to do it. If you're watching this in the future and c -sharp 7 has been added to Unity, you should clean up this code with a switch on type. All right, so let's go down here and make the execute task victory. So it's a private void, and inside we're going to receive the task system.task.victory, victory task. 
So in here, first of all, let's simply execute the pop-up so we can see when this is executing. And for the victory task, all we want to do is play the victory animation. So the worker class has a function to play a victory animation. And that function takes an argument, which is an action that gets triggered when the animation is completed. So he won't play the animation, and when the animation is completed, simply reset back to waiting for the next task. Okay, so again, up here, we ask the test system for a task. If he returns null, then we simply wait and request again after 200 milliseconds. If we do get a task, then we test the type of that task. If the task is a move to position task, then we execute this function, which moves him towards the target position. If the task is a victory task, then we execute it using this function. And in this function, we play the victory animation. When the animation is completed, it triggers this action. And this action simply resets him back to waiting for the next task and so on and so forth. All right, so now let's go into the game handler. And in here, we are spawning a move to position task on the left mouse button. So let's copy this and in here, switch this to the right mouse button. And on the right mouse button, instead of spawning move to position, let's spawn a victory task. Now the victory task is completely empty, doesn't have any fields, so just like that. All right, so we should now be able to spawn a move to position on left mouse button and a victory on right mouse button. So let's test. All right, so here's the worker. As you can see, he is currently waiting for a new task. And on the left mouse click, I can spawn a task for him to move to a target position. So if I click in here, Yep, there you go. He's executing the move to task. He goes there and now he's waiting for another task. And on the right mouse button, if I click, it will add the victory task and he won't play the victory animation. So click and there you go. Animation stops and again, he's requesting a task. I can also queue up tasks that won't be executed sequentially. So let's say go here, play the animation here, animation and here. Goes, animation, now he goes here, plays the animation finishes, goes here, and he waits for a new task. Okay, great. So as you can see, he's executing both different task types perfectly as he should. All right, now let's add the other worker, just make sure everything still works with multiple workers. So let's add this one in here. All right, so here we have both workers. Both of them are waiting for a new task. I spawn a task to move here, and he grabs. Now I spawn a victory, and he grabs. Another move, he grabs, he goes, victory, and so on. And as you can see, I can spawn all different task types, and they all get executed sequentially. And both tasks have different executions based on the task type. So there you have it. We set up our code to easily support multiple task types, which have different parameters and different executions. In the next video, we're going to cover how to create a nice complex task. Again, the game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the scene page, add it to your wishlist and follow. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from untcodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.